So recently we got the news that OpenAI is building a social network and this has been met with so much controversy that I want to make this video to explain to you guys exactly why OpenAI are doing this and the real reasoning behind this because most people don't actually know why OpenAI are doing this and in this video I'm actually going to clarify exactly what their game plan is. So we got this news literally yesterday where it stated that OpenAI is building a social network. Now one of the things that I constantly saw on Twitter, including even a tweet from a writer on Twitter, they actually said that I feel that this is not an AGI in 2026 kind of thing to focus on. Now, at face value, he is correct, okay? If you're going to achieve AGI in 2026, it does seem like why on earth would you be creating a social media application for users to network? It doesn't really seem like that at first glance, but on the contrary, it is probably the most important thing you can do as a company like OpenAI. I'm going to explain to you guys exactly why. So just remember that this is actually an important move. Now, one other motivation that people have actually said that OpenAI are doing this, and this is not the real motivation, this one doesn't really make sense, is the fact that the integration of Grok, which is Elon Musk's AI, into X, which is Twitter, which made everyone jealous because users can create viral content. This is not really one of the main motivations. I know that this is the motivation that, you know, people are seeming to float around at the moment, but this really isn't the motivation because OpenAI essentially have so much organic mentions that their product really just grows organically. So they don't really care about this. This is the real reason, okay? So Sam Altman tweeted, okay, fine, maybe we'll do a social app, but you have to understand why they're really doing the social app, okay? So one of the things, okay, one of the real issues right now with Twitter, and trust me, this is gonna come back full circle. So just pay attention for the next two minutes while I basically explain to you guys why this is so much bigger than you think and why it isn't just about building a social media app is because, okay, there is a problem online and this actually relates to the online world. So many of you may know that Twitter actually has a problem and trust me, this is gonna lead back in a second, okay? I just need to make my point. There is a problem right now on Twitter, okay? And there is a verified bot problem, which basically means that there are many Twitter accounts that are verified, but they are secretly being controlled by AI. Take a look at this. Many online blog posts, articles, websites are all claiming that Twitter is becoming a ghost town of bots as AI generated spam content floods the internet. Now, what's crazy about this is take a look at this tweet that I saw on threads. You can see that someone said Twitter is a ghost town. And remember guys, this is all gonna make a point in just a second, okay? It shows us that this person right here has typed in, I cannot provide a query to this as it goes against OpenAI's use case policy. This is basically the default text that you would get when an AI system isn't allowed to generate a response. And this clearly means that all of these accounts here were essentially bots created by someone who's trying to do something. I don't really know their motivations. There are political motivations, product motivations. But the point is, is that these aren't real humans. They aren't real people. Now, remember guys, this isn't just a problem for Twitter. In fact, one of the problems on the internet right now, and this is actually gonna lead into why Sam Altman is doing this, is the fact that AI generated spam sites are overwhelming the internet. Now, it hasn't happened at full scale yet because if you likely watch this channel, you're probably someone who pays attention to the AI news and you're quite likely to spot AI generated content much sooner than anyone else. But currently, AI generated content, you know, okay, is proliferating the internet at a scale that we've never seen. You can see it says a growing deluge of AI content is flooding platforms that we were never designed for a world where machines can talk with people convincingly. It's like you're running a farm and never heard of a wolf and then suddenly you've got new predators on the scene. And take a look at this. It says the platforms have no infrastructure in place. The gates are open. Okay, remember that the gates are open, right? So this is a giant problem right now. Okay, and nobody is working on this problem at all. Okay, companies are kind of working on this problem, but you know, they're not really doing a great job of it. You can see that companies, you know, like Meta are building tools that label and detect AI generated images that's post on Facebook, Instagram and threads. Amazon has limited some things. You know, uh, Twitter has, you know, trialing not a bot program in some countries where you basically have to sign up with a credit card. And overall, this is a really overwhelming problem for social media. So you might be thinking, okay, what does that have to do with Sam Altman launching a social app? And let me explain to you guys exactly why, because if I didn't explain to you guys the context of just how bad AI generated not only content is, and I don't mind AI generated content, it's when that content is just spam content, like it serves no real educational value. And the reason that that is bad for the internet is because we won't know what is real and what is false. And here on Facebook, 
all of these images are getting, you know, millions and millions of likes. And you have to understand that Facebook's demographic is of a much older proportion of society. So for people like me and you, we can easily see this and tell that it's, you know, AI, Dolly 3, ChatGPT or whatever. But the average 60 year old, 70 year old, 80 year old, 50 year old, they're going to see this and they have no clue that this stuff is AI generated. Now, why is that a problem for the internet? Okay. We use the internet on a day to day basis and we cannot have the internet decaying. Okay. And social networks are a core hub of the internet. Now, Here's the thing, okay? Most people don't know that Sam Altman and his team have created this. This is the world ID. Now, you may have not seen this before, but this is something that Sam Altman has been working on for a few years now in collaboration with this, you know, organization, I guess you could say, called WorldCoin. And this is something that is remarkably important. And as every single year comes on, this is going to be more important as the time comes on. And I'm about to explain to you why this relates to OpenAI's social media app. So this ID right here, this world ID is essentially a digital ID that verifies whether or not you are human. And right now, okay, Sam Altman and this, you know, company called WorldCoin, it's like a Web3 company. They're basically building out the infrastructure to ensure that everyone online can be verified as a real human. Sam Altman actually gives a talk where he explains that, look, AI agents are going to be running around the internet doing a million different tasks. And how on earth are we going to know whether or not you're human or AI? And this is why Sam Altman is creating a social app, okay? Is because you have to understand that right now, we are in a situation where AI online is very, very convincing and we don't know who is who. Now, with that being said, if Sam Altman and OpenAI, if they create a social media app, they will likely have one of the most valuable platforms in the year 2030 or 2040. And I know you guys might think that why on earth would they care about social media apps? Guys, you have to understand that AI agents are going to outnumber humans, maybe a hundred to one or even a thousand to one. When you can command, okay, 10 agents to go off and do work for you and they are browsing around the internet, you have to understand that the internet is going to become a really crowded place. And this world coin solution okay this world coin thing is extremely important for that future okay now basically why sam altman is creating this platform and i'm going to show you guys a bit more about world id in a second is because if he owns a platform where you've got a hundred percent check that everyone is human that platform is going to be 10 times more valuable than meta facebook instagram threads twitter and you have to understand that this is OpenAI's goal in fact let me show you guys before we dive into world coin what OpenAI said before remember guys Opening, I said before that they are not essentially abandoning the AI race. I made, I made this video, you know, around three weeks ago. I spoke about how OpenAI were basically revealing a major strategy shift. And part of that reason was they realized something, okay? They realized that these models were becoming commoditized. What that basically means is that, you know, ChatGPT is no longer the best social media app in the world in terms of like, you know, how LLM performance is. People don't really care anymore because everything is now ChatGPT performance. What people care about is a core product. And what that means for OpenAI is that they have to focus now on the user. And that is people like you and me. And what that means is, is that when when you have models like DeepSeek, ChatGPT, Copilot, Claude, Gemini, Llama 4, all of these models that are practically at the same area, OpenAI have already stated this in that video. And in that video, I basically stated that, look, what is more valuable in five years? Sam Altman basically said in five years, the most valuable thing is going to be a 1 billion daily active user destination site that doesn't have to do custom acquisition. Okay. They basically asked him what's going to be, you know, uh, you know, more important. Okay. A state of the art AI model or a 1 billion user daily active site. Okay. And you have to think about this guys in the future of the internet, are you going to want to be on a social media site where you don't know whether or not the person you're talking to AI, or you want a place where you can actually know that you're talking and conversing with other humans. And trust me guys, the problem seems bad right now and in the future, it's going to get a lot worse. So one of the ways they're doing that and one of the key integrations that I think will be at the center of that is of course this world ID and I'm bringing it back to the reason you know you've got bots on social media you've got AI proliferating social media that is why Sam Martin is going to be creating a social media platform is because if he has a platform of a billion users all of real humans imagine the kind of advertising you could do to companies you could say you know Twitter is full of bots Meta is full of you know all of those bots and all those other problems Facebook is the same but, you know, we've got our social media platform where it's integrated with, you know, all of these real people, real humans, and essentially they have the best product. Now, what's crazy about this as well is that this World ID thing, I don't see any other company building this. So if OpenAI manages to actually successfully build this, other companies are probably going to have to integrate this. Now, I'm going to show you guys a quick few clips from the WorldCoin talk, where they actually talk about, you know, how they're going to implement this and why this is needed. 
And then I'm gonna show you guys, of course, how they're rolling this out, so how you guys can access this. One thing we thought for sure is that the world was gonna need a new, a new layer of infrastructure um, for this to be able to happen. That you wanted the ability to uh, verify humanity. You wanted to know who the people were. You wanted to be able to provide great infrastructure for humans and agents to be sending resources back and forth and doing all sorts of things and communicating with each other. And we thought that maybe uh, if there were a way to build a new network, that it would be a powerful step forward towards doing this. And so with that, we came up with a simple plan. And that plan didn't change much since then, and I don't think it will change much going forward. And it had four big steps. That's it. The first one was about building a proof of human system that can be deployed globally. It is fully anonymous. Then second, use that infrastructure to launch a digital token by giving ownership in it to eventually every human, and use that to get the, the network to critical scale. Then third, continuously scale and decentralize the network to then eventually, among many other great things that we hope this network will do, use it to make the benefits of AI accessible to everyone. And so we, we did one. We developed World ID, which we think is that proof of human on internet scale. We launched a token last July, which brought us to step number two. And so currently, we are at three. And that means that a big, big focus of what we do is the continuous scale and decentralization of the network. And I know while some of you guys do think this is dystopian, I do think it is dystopian if it is used by a totalitarian government and they just, you know, have ridiculous control over you. But one thing that they do make, a point that they do make, which is actually, you know, kind of important, is that you have to give over a significant piece of your identity to many companies to verify a simple checkbox. Like, if they want to check if you're part of a certain country, you have to give them your entire passport and driver's license. When in reality, a lot of times, these companies have data breaches, now your information is on the internet, and it's just a whole mess and basically they're talking about you know solving that problem so take a look here how many of you have a driver's license in your pocket how many of you borrowed a passport off of one of your friends earlier today <laughs> thank you Ajay <laughs> I promise I'll give it back I can't actually use anything about it we'll go into the details of that in just a minute one of the important attributes to understanding whether or not a government credential is real is whether it's the one instance of that government credential. Uniqueness at scale is one of the challenges in being able to use credentials issued by government authorities in any meaningful way on the internet. There are other challenges as well. That driver's license, how many of you have tried to buy beer with your driver's license recently? I know you don't all look as young as I look. <laughs> Did the uh, person that was selling you the beer say, <laughs> 155 pounds. Yeah, maybe you don't need this beer. <laughs> Did they say, oh, I know somebody that lives on your block? Because you've got your address on your driver's license. Currently, the way that we use credentials on the internet is we disclose all of the information that those credentials use in order to answer one simple question. Are you over 18? And should you have access to this content? Or if you're trying to participate in some process provided by your government, are you a citizen of your government? You don't need to answer anything more than that. In fact, there are reasons why anonymity is critical for those kinds of interactions and so important. So uniqueness gives us the ability to determine that the document is real. Anonymity gives you the willingness to actually use the information contained in that document. So today, we're beginning a beta of World ID credentials. And there's two characteristics that I think are critically important here that I want to point out. This is only possible because of the scale and anonymity that AMPC provides. So we think we're unique in the ability to make this possible, but of course it's going into the protocol, so anybody can take advantage of it, anybody can use it, and we would encourage anybody and everybody to do that. The second attribute, because we are so committed to privacy, that passport information is only ever going to be on your phone. We're not copying it up into the cloud, we're not making an instance of it and putting it into the back end. You will hold the information about your passport on your device, and AMPC will be used to do uniqueness check. An incredible way to provide private access and the ability to interact in an anonymous way while providing the ability to verify certain attributes that are critical to access online services, truly adding to that experience. And so, yeah, with all of these AI models and AI face replacement and voice replacement things going on, I think 
This social media platform is probably going to be a hub of real humans and largely is a part of Sam Altman's greater plan to build a website that has a billion users daily. So remember, ChatGPT was one of the fastest growing social media apps. So this is going to be something that is also in his arsenal. Let me know what you guys think. This is just my personal theory. And honestly, I think it kind of makes sense. So with that being said, see you guys.